Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we look at making our HL7 messages conform to those of the interoperability toolkit, the ITK, used extensively in the UK's NHS. I'd like to start by explaining why this toolkit is so important when doing HL7 integration work. HL7's biggest strength, its flexibility, is also its greatest weakness. Inconsistencies between implementations add to the costs but also lead to errors that ultimately put patients at risk. The ITK seeks to address this by putting in place a more defined standard for your HL7 messages. The great thing for us integrators is that once we have an integration with one ITK site, the next one can be done much faster. I'm going to start by going into HL7 suit and looking at some of the difficulties you have when working with HL7 in the UK. HL7 Soup comes with a great list of example messages, but all of these are really focused internationally. They come from all sources around the world. Further, the drop-downs, although helpful, are often very American-centric. So if we look at, for instance, the patient's race, our selections are distinctly American. So I'm going to navigate now to the ITK website, and we're going to try and make this somewhat more British. First of all, here is the address of the ITK toolkit. I've already signed up to this website. So all I have to do now is navigate to ITK releases and then scroll down and I find the NHS Interoperability Toolkit HL7 version 2. And you can click on that and uh, you would have to subscribe to it first, which only takes a couple of seconds, and then you can access this page where you can download the actual toolkit. And once you have it, you can extract it out, and you end up with these directories here. So what I'm going to do is, th there's all sorts of really helpful information here, but I'm just going to focus on how we can validate your messages. So I'm going to start by going into schemas, and we can see here this is the full XSD list which defines the messages that will be sent while used in the UK. So I'm just going to copy those, and I am going to go across to an HL7 soup directory. Uh, this is in my roaming app data, and it's HL7 soup custom schema. And I'm just going to paste those files in. You'll have an equivalent on your computer. Uh, you can access it by typing in percentage app data, and that will get you to your roaming uh, app data directory and then HL7 soup custom schemas. And then I just have to restart HL7 soup for the changes to take effect. So now if I head back into HL7 soup, we're going to see that it's using the ITK schemas. That means if I scroll down and have a look at the patient's race, we're going to see that they have no values in this drop-down. They're not used in the UK. Instead, they use the ethnic group, which is provided for here. And here you'll see there's a far more British selection of choices. Now also, I'm going to try and replace the existing example messages with those that come with the ITK toolkit. So I will navigate to the back into the toolkits directory and I'm now going to go into the examples directory and I'm going to just search for star.text. There's lots of really interesting examples in here and descriptions of what they're for but I just want the HL7 messages, so I will select all of those, and then I will drag and drop them onto HL7 soup. It then asks me in an, if I would like to put all of them into the same tab, which yes, I would like to do that. And there we have it. We now have the list of messages that are available to the, from the ITK toolkit. Now straight away you will notice that some of them have gone red, they're actually showing up as invalid in HL7 soup. If I have a click on them, I'll actually see why. 
it explains to me that the date of time, uh, sorry, the date time of their birth is invalid. And sure enough, if I look closer at this, I'll see that it's actually trying to do a 13th month. So I'm just going to change that, and I believe that's on all these messages. It happens to, I've already checked through them before and seen that's the case. So I'm just going to quickly fix those. So what I'll do is I will uh, quickly create a filter and I'm going to say uh, filter where it equals the invalid date and now I've just got those three and then I will change that to a two and if I right click on this again and I go update all three now all three of them will have the valid date. Let's see what else HL7 soup can provide for us. Firstly, if we have a look at my favorite ADT04 message, we will see that it contains Z segments. These have now been fully defined as per the ITK syntax, and you'll see that every single field is described as well. If I click on the register patient dropdown, I'll see that the full definition, including all the Z segments, is available to me. I can double click on one of those and instantly get that message that segment added into my message. Further, I'm going to want to validate all my HL7 messages to make sure that they're ITK compliant. To do that, I'm going to navigate into the HL7's highlights and validation screen, and I'm going to create a new highlighting set. So I'm going to call this ITK NHS. And I'm just going to clear the existing filters that are in place. Uh, that was just a collection of date filters. Um, but I'm going to generate it off the message that we've got sitting behind us instead. So if I click Generate, and I'll those windows would be popping up on the main screen, but I'm working off a second screen for this video, so excuse that. If I now choose to highlight red and mark as invalid any invalid dates, and I'll click OK. And now it generates a highlighter for every single date that's used in that message. And I'm going to click that again, drag that in for your viewing. And I'm also going to check all values that are not in data tables, i.e. make sure that they fit the tables that are prescribed by the ITK. And now those have been generated too. I can export this and send this to other colleagues so that their messages can also be validated as ITK compliant. Let's have a look at what that's done to our message set. Now we'll actually see that we've got a few errors. Rather than scrolling through all of those, I'm just gonna go uh, and filter messages via validation and I'm only going to see the invalid messages. So I've actually already taken a look as to seeing what's wrong with these. Um, it appears that they've suggested that the 19 is one of their sample message values. It's not actually in, in the, uh, the lookup. So I'm going to change that to not known. And the home one, uh, I believe that should probably be usual place of residence, not home. So I'll send these uh, back to the ITK team and uh, hopefully they can address these um, so you won't have to fix these up, but I'll just quickly do that. Uh, this 500 one, in fact, it's probably I can do the easiest one, which is just to this filter again, where it equals 500, and just update them both at the same time, so uh, we can just, for now, I believe there is a no longer in use will do me and I will update the two messages. So it fixes the other one. And I will now remove that filter. Oh, still got another one. And a couple more. Um, great, I can now remove the invalid filter and I now have a perfectly validated selection of ITK messages so that I can use for uh, samples and, and testing my integration work. 
so I can now save these and if I navigate to my app data roaming HL7 soup directory and I change the file name to oh, not that oh no to that the sample HL7 messages.txt I can now replace the standard HL7 sample messages with my UK ones so whenever I load up HL7 soup I'm going to get the UK values uh, sorry the UK example messages uh, to help me work and of course I will have full validation of all my HL7 messages to make sure that I conform to the ITK toolkit specification finally I'd like to add that other countries also have their own custom schemas defined and if you go to their specific HL7 websites you can normally download the XSDs and copy those values in as well so you don't you know this is not just restricted to to the United Kingdom as always you can download HL7 soup from www.hl7soup.com and please if you find these videos have helped you could you please like them or click subscribe to hear more as they come out thank you